Well, hi, FlossTube. This is Tina Frazier coming to you from Columbus, Ohio. It is Thursday, April 19th at approximately 9 p.m. Eastern Time. I wanted to come to you a little bit today. I'm probably going to record this and maybe merge it with um, another video that I might do this weekend at my in-laws house. We're going to go down to West Virginia again and visit with them this weekend so we can help around the house. But we're going down on Friday night and coming back on Sunday instead of taking an extra day. I only have so many <laughs> vacation and sick time days to use at work. And well, um, you know, it's been two weeks since we've been down there. So we're just going to go down and kind of relax and hang out with them for a little bit. But I wanted to give you a little bit of an update on some stitch enhancement stuff and some update whip updates that I have for you and a, a new start that I actually started the other night. So um, bear with me just a minute and let me reach over and grab a couple of things for you to share with you. So a lot of you out there have been talking about um, on Stitch Mania and um, other groups that I'm involved in in Facebook. Um, you've been all talking about going to your local Hobby Lobby stores. Um, apparently Hobby Lobby has been clearancing a lot of their cross-stitch supplies and their cross-stitch kits. So I've been wanting to go to, we have basically two Hobby Lobbies that I shop at um, here in Columbus. And they're a little bit of a drive. There are two Joann's and two Michael's that are lots closer to me. Um, than Hobby Lobby is and I don't normally go way out of my way to go but to go to Hobby Lobby just because Joann's and Michael's are closer to me but um, since you guys have started talking about your Hobby Lobby clearance sales I've been wanting to go for about the past two weeks so last night I dropped my husband off at home and instead of going to my local Nita workshop stitch night I actually went up to Hobby Lobby and walked out of there with some haul. So here is my little video to show you some of my Hobby Lobby haul. Now I posted this uh, picture, which um, I might insert at the end just to just so you can take a little bit of a longer look at them. But uh, I posted this on Stitch Mania last night and also on my personal Facebook group, just the picture of a group of cross-stitch patterns that I got, or cross-stitch kits that I got at my Hobby Lobby. Um, I was really happy with my haul, um, except for one. Some of you have gotten the Dimensions Christmas scene kit, the winter scene kit with the, the skating pond. And there's a gentleman up in the front who is tying a lady's skates. And they're sitting on a bench or something up in, up in the front. Um, they had that Dimensions kit, but it was still listed at regular price at $49.99. And I think some of you have posted that you actually got that kit for like seven or ten bucks because they've discounted it. Well, my unfortunately my Hobby Lobby hasn't discounted that one yet, but they, I did pick up quite a few kits. I wasn't wasn't sure what I would find if I would even find any still left, but um, I did. So here is what I got. Don't mind the um, don't mind the bag rustling. All right, so these first couple of kits are pretty small. And then um, I got two bigger kits. So I will start off with the smaller ones first. I just wanted to get these out of the bag for you. Okay, so this first one, it was really cute. I wasn't going to get it, but it was Halloween. I don't have a lot of Halloween things to put up. But this was cute. It's a $1.99 Artiste mini kit. Um, I got it for $0.50. Cents. So all these kits were $0.75 cents off. This is a um, witch's hat. And it comes with the um, little plastic yellow frame and the floss, but it's the little witch's hat for 50 cents. Um, this was the first kit that kind of caught my eye, and I hadn't seen these before. These are um, Vervaco, V-E-R-V-A-C-O, Vervaco DIY embroidery kits. Um, and I hadn't seen these before, but these were pretty cute. This kit was normally $21.99. I got it for 5 bucks. And what, what struck me was the, the reindeer until I saw the owl. I don't know if you can see that. That owl is so adorable. And the interesting thing about this kit is that these are stitched on Ada, little pieces of Ada. 
that are actually, um, they're sewn into these little bags. So you can see the seam at the bottom and the seam in the middle. So you open it up like this to stitch on the front of this little bag thing. So it's like a little bag and it's sewn at the bottom. I haven't actually seen these before. I don't know if you can order them. Um, there's a little tag on the inside. Warm iron, I don't know. Um, you might be able to find these. Maybe somebody has a tutorial on how to stitch these. But the um, you can see it's the seam is folded in in the back and it's actually uh, like ironed that way. It's not too bad, you know, little teeny Ada little pouches that you stitch these on. And there's a whole set of them. They had another set that I wasn't real enamored with. Um, but you can see there's other little sets down here that you can get. I don't know, those red and white reindeer are cute. Um, there's another owl set. I think they had this little teeny white owl set that you can't see that's actually under the thing. Let me see if I can pull it up a little bit so you get it not stuck in the baggie. There we go. Not set in the baggie symbol. So there's a little owl. I think they had the owl kit. I didn't like the owls too much. These red and white reindeer kits might be kind of cute. But um, this is something I wouldn't have normally picked up, especially at $21.99. But you know, at $5, you know, that's cute. And what I'm probably going to do is swap out the red. I might go get some of that, um, you know, white and green or red and green or green and white. Um, twine, baker's twine, I guess is what you would call it to cinch these up once I get them stitched. But no, I thought that was really cute. Um, one of the things I'm going to do with this, the little witch's hat, is I'm probably going to make it into a pillow. I don't think I'm going to use the little yellow frame. I might, I don't know. But I think I'm going to make this little teeny pillow. I thought that would be cute. And these, I might just sew and stuff. I don't know. I don't know what I'm going to do with them yet. So the next two kits were really cute, and they're Halloween themed. I don't have, a, like I said, I don't have a whole lot of Halloween theme. But this one is an Artiste Mini countered cross stitch kit. It's called Halloween Pumpkin. Now this one's really cute because, you know, it has the cat and the bat and the, the ghost and the pumpkin. But the interesting thing is this came with white Ada. But look at all that black floss, that black and orange floss. So as you can see, this is technically a full coverage kit. Now what I might do, since I really don't stitch on Ada, I like even weaves and linen better. Um, don't mind that. That's the sound of my cat. She's actually, um, she's the cat that we keep in isolation. We let her out of the room every so often. And she's out tonight just kind of wandering around and she's using a scratch pad. So she's doing all right. Um, you might hear her meow on occasion. So her name is Nico. Um, if she'll let me, I'll show you, show her to you. But anyway, what I was saying is, since this is stitched on white Ada, basically everything is stitched. This is full coverage. I might actually choose to do this on maybe like chalkboard fabric. You know, that's really big right now. Um, and everything like that. But I may actually switch out the um, threads for the cat, the ghost, and the bat and make them glow in the dark to use glow in the dark floss for that. But yeah, there's a lot of floss in this one because it's full coverage. And this was a $7.99 kit I got for $2. $2. Can you believe that? That's a pretty good price. Now this next one was really, really cute. I really liked this a lot. This was a $12.99 kit, Artiste Mini Counted Cross Stitch Kit, that I got for $3.25. Um, this is Cat, Bats, and Pumpkin. Isn't that adorable, you guys? It's so cute. The other thing that I kind of liked about this little kit is this pouch that it's in. Isn't that normal, like, easy-to-tear cellophane type stuff? This is actually a vinyl pouch. You know, it's it's nice and vinyl. But it comes with the floss and everything and the Ada. You know, I'll probably switch out the Ada, maybe. I don't know. We'll kind of see. I might get some specialty specialty fabric. Um, one of the things I'm struggling with is, for some reason, the last few weeks, I've been, like, totally on a stitching pattern, cross-stitch pattern collecting binge. And a lot of them have been, you know, old magazines I've been going through. Um, don't mind me. My eye is itching a little bit. Um, but uh, 
mag old magazines that I have on hand and stuff. I've been looking through them and finding patterns that I want to stitch. And I have like, if I was to do Stitch Mania, I would probably, it would probably be like Stitch three months of Mania. Because um, <laughs> I think I have that many patterns that I actually want to stitch. But the problem is, is I don't really stitch on Ada. So all these, all these, um, patterns or kits that come with the Ada, I swap the, swap the Ada out for even weaves or linens, which can be, get kind of costly. And I also don't have a big stash of any of these because I normally just buy like a Mirabilia pattern and then buy the fabric at the same time to go with that pattern. And then I never change it. So I have fabric on hand. It's just cut for a specific piece. And I could probably dig in and um, pull those out and use those pieces of fabric for other things. But there's other fabric I think I want to try. And I just don't have the stat the fabric stash. I have none. I have one piece of um, fabric coming from some company that I ordered it from. I can't remember the name of the company. I don't think it was one two three stitch. It might have been one two three stitch. I don't I don't remember what company it's coming from, but um, you remember that Amish pattern that I was showing you guys that had the three Amish patterns and I'm gonna squish together and make one big one. Um, I'm gonna do that pattern on it. Um, it's gonna be a little bit bigger, one way than I actually need. So I might have a little bit of that left, but I don't think I'll have enough of it left to do something else super big on it. Um, but yeah, I mean, how do I get, how do I get that? I don't, I don't have a fabric stash, you guys. So like to redo this one, you know, I'm going to have to take the floss and go to my local needle workshop, floss, toss it onto something and figure something out and then order it. Um, I wish I was like all those other people that could just have a big stash of fabric that I could just go take this, go, go to Hobby Lobby, buy a kit like this for two bucks, come home. Find the fabric out of my stash and start it. I'm not like that, you guys. <laughs> I wish I could be because I really want to. And I really want all the pretty fabrics. I love the modeled fabrics. I, and um, I would love to have bolts of fabric where I could go cut a piece and writ dye it or coffee and tea dye it or Kool-Aid dye it. Is Kool-Aid dyeing even a thing? I mean, I would try Kool-Aid dyeing because you could probably get some remarkable remarkable uh, colors out of Kool-Aid dyeing. I would probably try ice, the ice dyeing method, you know, where you put ice cubes on it and put the dye on it. I'd try, I'd try that. But the problem is, is <laughs> my husband's like, you know, for all the, all the involvement and time commitment that that would take, just buy the fabric from somebody else that already does it. That's kind of his philosophy. And I'd like to do that too. But <laughs> really, I don't have a lot of room. Anyway, so that is all the small kits. So that was, what, four four small kits. So I got two bigger kits. This one was actually really cute, and I was really surprised that it kind of struck my eye. This is another um, Vervaco. Oh, one of the things I wanted to say about the Vervaco kit, and I'll show you this one. Um, this is the second Vervaco kit that I got, V-E-R-V-A-C-O, Vervaco embroidery kit. Um, this is called Little Owl's Tree. Little Owl's Tree. I thought this was really cute. Again, it's on. it comes with Ada. It comes with the floss pattern. I showed you a little bit of the pattern. Yeah. So, um, sorry, that was the way it was packaged. I didn't open it up. Um, so, let me see what I can do to cover this up. All right. So one of the things I thought was really cute, this had fallen out of the package. This is a little teeny fabric tag that says, I stitch Vervaco. I thought that was really clever. That's kind of cool. So I don't know if I'll use that on anything, but it's a little fabric tag you can sew onto stuff. That's kind of neat. But anyway, this was a uh, $39.99 kit that I got for $10. $39.99, I got it for $10. I thought that was pretty good. Um, one of the other things 
one of the other reasons why I wanted to go to Hobby Lobby to check out their clearance is because I don't, since I don't stitch on Ada, I always swap out the fabric for kits that I tend to buy. And because I swap out the fab, the fabric, you know, spending $40 basically for a pattern and maybe the floss I might use is a lot of money. I mean, these aren't chatelaines, you guys. Chatelaine patterns are expensive. And then if you do the silks and everything for them, you're talking two or $300 just for the supplies to even stitch the dang things. Um, for something like this, I'm not going to spend $40 just to get the pattern and the floss to do it. And then still spend another $20 to get, you know, the linen or the even weave on it. But I will spend $10 to get the pattern and the floss because that's what I would have spent for just a pattern anyway at my, my local craft stitch store. So, yeah, this was really cute, I thought. And it gives, um, this might be another kit, these owls here. And here's some of the other um, little designs that I guess are in this series. This is a me These are measurement charts that you could hang on a wall so you can measure the height of your children. Yeah. I just thought these were cute. You know, I never really heard of Vervaco before. V-E-R-V-A-C-O. This little owl tree kit was cute. So, as you know, I, um, well, you may not know, but in my earlier videos, I talked about how um, I, I really like Asian motifs, and especially geishas and kimonos and, you know, everything like that. Um, one of the pieces I entered in my state fair that won first place and best to show was one of the Dimensions Gold Kit ladies. She was one of the geishas with the cherry blossom tree and the little dove. Um, I can take a picture or insert a picture um, if I think about it. And show you guys but I really like Asian things I have quite a few kits excuse me I have quite a few kits and quite a few um, other patterns to show or patterns that I have in my stash for Asian kits I have the Mirabilia um, angel with the little bird cage and she's in the kimono I have that one started already but um, I had seen this and I think I actually have the pattern booklet for it I'm not sure I'm going to have to check my stash, but they had the Artiste, Artiste brand counted cross stitch kit, the Geisha Angel. Um, it's by Cooler Design Studio. I might have her, I don't know, but this kit was a $29.99 kit marked down to $7.50. It's Cooler Design Studio by Zweigert. The Geisha Angel. Move her over here. Maybe you can see her. Sorry about the glare, you guys. The Geisha Angel. Now, the interesting thing is, I don't know if you can see it. Look at all this shiny stuff right here, you guys. There's a lot of shiny stuff in there. Holy moly. It's like some sort of blending filament type of stuff. Now, I've worked with this stuff before. It's kind of fussy. But um, the other thing, I know this, this comes with antique basically antique or cream Ada and if you can tell stitch the model stitched this way is uh, her wings kind of fade into the fabric so I'm probably definitely changing out the fabric on this I don't know if I'll try and go for like a purple or a pink maybe a lime green maybe a blue I don't know maybe even like a pearl gray or something for her but yeah so I have her, I might actually have the leaflet for her. If I do, I'm going to have to figure out what I, what I want to do. What I want to do with this. But for $7.50, I figure what the heck. If I don't have it, this, is, this will make a great addition to my Japanese ladies. So that is my haul from Hobby Lobby, you guys. I think I did pretty good. I have these two big kits. And then four, whoops, four smaller kits four smaller kits and then a the little little witch's hat I think I did pretty good at Hobby Lobby yesterday 
Um, so there is that. All right. So um, on stash unloading, um, I had there was this one lady that was selling quite a few patterns pretty inexpensively, and I jumped on the bandwagon and I picked a couple out. Now this first one that I picked out, I don't know now if I'm gonna stitch it, but I knew when I first requested it, and I think all of these were under two bucks. So I think a couple of them might have been fifty cents. I don't know, but um, I paid under two bucks for all of these. So, um, you know, total, I think it was like $8, including shipping. It was a pretty good price. But this first one is actually a needlepoint, um, a counted thread on canvas pattern. So it's technically a needlepoint pattern. And looking at the pattern, you know, I may actually, I thought I could, you know, I thought it would be easy to convert over to cross stitch. But I don't know, I just don't know if I want to take the time to do it. It's really, really cute. And I know there's probably more in this series, but yeah. So we have number 10, Brambleberry Lane, a Cheryl Schaefer design, especially for Rainbow Gallery. There's a lot of um, Pebble, Pebbly Pearl, Rainbow Linen Splendor, and Bravo floss in here. This is really cute. But again, it's a needlepoint chart. So... I don't know. I may I may be keeping this one. I may be passing this stash. I may be putting it up for sale. I don't know if I really want to do this. This house is cute. But I just don't know if I want to really take the time to convert this to a cross stitch pattern. It's really cute. I thought I might. Either that or I just didn't realize, you know, 100% I didn't correlate counted can counted thread on canvas with uh, needlepoint. So there you have it. Um, so one of my other second finds, now this one is really cute, and I thought, you know, for like a buck or 50 cents, however much I paid for it, um, I hadn't seen this one before, but there's one pattern on this that really kind of caught my eye, and um, I'm a little surprised now that I get the pamphlet. Uh, the colors in this one are kind of odd, so I may actually change the colors in this when I, if and when I stitch it. Um, it has somebody's name written on it, but uh, this is called Mulberry Bush Lane by Kathy's Cross Stitch. Kathy and Cross Stitch are with a K. This is by Kathy, St Kathy Stanley, Kathy with a K. This is leaflet number six, Mulberry Bush Lane. The one that caught my eye was this Home Sweet Home pattern here in the corner. So I figured out what the heck. I'll give it a shot. See, I'm going to go for that home sweet home pattern in the corner. I thought that was really cute. Um, can't show you the back because that's where the home sweet home pattern is. But it looks fairly self-explanatory. I might change out some of the colors because that color scheme doesn't really do anything for me. But, you know, maybe I'll do like home sweet home, the words, in variegated flosses or something. I don't know. I'm going to have to figure it out, figure out what I want to do with that. But I thought that was very cute. So this third pattern kind of caught my eye too, and I think I've seen these before, um, but I just had never been too interested in the pattern until I was looking at it on the Facebook group, and I was like, oh, well, you know what? I could actually stitch those side by side on the same piece of fabric, and they'd be really kind of cool or something. But they're long and narrow, and I actually have quite a few long and narrow spaces, so maybe I can put one on top of the other, you know, switch them like that. I don't know. But this is called Elegant Angels. This is by Stitch World X Stitch. This is leaflet number 03-176L. Um, I don't think it says anywhere on here who the designer is. This is from Stitch World. Um, but anyway, Elegant Angels. These are just really cute. Now, the other thing that I thought was real interesting, and I'm not going to get too up close, but the face, the face here, the face, the hands, see the hands here, and the feet, the face, the hands, and the feet on both of these are all charted for over one stitching. And they're pretty detailed, actually. I don't know if you can see the detail in the face. 
It's all over one stitching, you guys. And I actually, I actually do my skin over one. So this actually makes me really happy to see that I have now two angels. You know, I wouldn't normally get this. If anybody knows who the designer of this is, you know, post a comment because that would be great. I don't know who the designer is. It just says Stitch World X Stitch. So this is Elegant Angels. And this last one I was actually really happy to find. Um, one of the magazines that I had pulled aside, one of the old Craft Stitch and Country Craft magazines, and one of the old other leaflets that I had gotten, um, also from Stash Unload, had the I Love Cross Stitch pattern and the um, cross, stitch, cross Stitchers Make Every Minute Count. Well, I have, I've started one of those, and I'll show it to you here. But this one is from Alma Lynn. It's one of the private collection um, counted cross stitch patterns. And it's the Need a Woman Sampler. When this when this went up on sale, I was like, ha, oh, yay. I kind of like Alma Lynn. You know, the little bunny rabbits that are on the, at the top of my um, floss tube channel header. Those are Alma Lynn's that came out of one of the cross stitch and country craft, crafts magazines. But this is really cute, you guys. I really like this. This is the Needlewoman Sampler by Alma Lynn. And it says, I pray that risen from the dead, I may in glory stand, a crown perhaps upon my head and needle in my hand. Oh, there we go. I pray that, that risen from the dead, I may in glory stand, a crown perhaps upon my head and needle in my hand. And then it gives um, the, I believe there's a place for the date. And your initials down here at the bottom. But I thought that was really cute. The only problem I'm going to have with this is this entire chart is basically a, a large print chart. And it's one humongous sheet of paper. So I'm going to actually have to, um, I'm actually going to have to make a working copy and shrink it down and put it on several sheets of paper so it's easier to work on. But yeah, um, this, boop -doop -doop, the needle warmings, this sampler was stitched over two threads on 28 count plum blossom linen. I might actually have to find the plum blossom linen because I actually kind of like the look of the model. But, um, you know, the, the pictures on these don't do it justice. So if I can find plum blossom linen or some ilk thereof, you know, great. This is probably what mine's going to be close to looking like when it's done so I hope to start that soon all right so I'm gonna go ahead and pause for a minute because I have to take a little bit of a uh, a break and when I come back I'll um, do some little um, whip updates for you and actually show you pretty much a finish that I had this week so I'll be right back <laughs> so hi floss tube I'm back sorry about the little break um, you probably didn't notice much because well, I paused the video, but I may be sitting in a slightly different spot um, with the lighting different. So um, anyway, I was going to show you um, a new start of mine. Um, I don't know if you remember me uh, showing this on one of my last videos. My last video. This is from. This pattern is from the Cross Stitch and Country Crafts, May June 1988. Um, issue. Um, this is, i get to it, this is the cross stitchers, this one here, cross stitchers make every minute count. I actually made a start on this last night um, to get it started for um, the stitch along, the um, year of start stitch along where you start a new project every month on the 18th of the month. Um, I got this started last night to kind of coincide with that, and this is where I got. I don't know if you can see that. I don't know how well it's going to show up, but uh, maybe you can actually see it a little better this way. So I started with the little um, stopwatch that's in the middle here. Uh, did some of the back stitching over to here so I could do some of the um, the outline. So this is a new start for me. 
Um, this is on 36 count R and R Productions vintage homespun linen. It's kind of a brown. There's no modeling of it. I don't really like that. You know, I'm just going to turn this off, and that way I can do it this way. Um, I'm using the called for floss in the pattern. Maybe here. Maybe you can see it a little bit better this way. There we go. This is my little sloth button. I like this little sloth button that I got. These are some buttons I got at Joann's that I just added um, magnets to. Magnets to the back. But he's my little sloth guy. Um, yeah, so this is a uh, cross stitchers make every minute count. Um, so I got the minute done, the little stopwatch that's in the middle. Um, I just kind of want to get around the outside so I could do the, um, like the, basically the quilt block, quilt block border. Um, so this was my start, my newest start, and that's what I did. The um, companion piece I'm going to do for that came out of the, uh, is will come out of the Amelin leaflet that I showed you before, and this is the I Love Cross Stitch. That one up there in the corner on the sweater, I Love Cross Stitch. I'm going to do that one on the same fabric, the R&R &R vintage, homes, vintage homespun fabric. Um, I have them in the same the same project bag. These are my project bags, you guys. <laughs> I don't have like the handmade fabric project bags. I use these over-dyed, these over-dyed Ziploc baggies for now. I mean the oversized, not over-dyed, oversized Ziploc baggies for now. I wish I had some of those project bags. I'm not a sewer, so I don't think I'd ever make myself one, but I kind of really wish I had one of those because those are really nice. All right, so um, as you know, I've also kind of been participating in Mill Hill Mondays. Well, this Monday, I actually did participate in Mil the Mill Hill Monday stitch along, and um, I pulled out my Pine Tree Santa and actually got him finished. Now, I made the mistake of cutting him out before I actually put the backing on him, so I should have backed him. But I did get the Pinewoods, the Northwood Santa's Pine Tree Santa finished for you. Finished. This is what he looks like. And here he is. He's all cut out. Um, let's see. Oh, I'll just use the back of this. There he is. There he is. He's got the beads and everything. There's beads on the tree. Yeah, you can see the beads on the tree now. But he's very cute. I need to add the hanger to him and add the backing. So just in case you're wondering, this is what my backing looks like, you guys. It's a little messy, not terrible. But that's kind of what my backs look like. A little messy, not terrible. But this is the Pine Tree Santa from the Northwood Santa's line of the Mill Hill Kits. Isn't he cute? And look at those little bunnies with their French knot eyeballs. I just thought he was really cute. So he is done. I have a finish. Yay! Go me. Um, so... Yeah, that's kind of going to be my goal, is to get a couple things finished. This is my first finish in, um, it's not completely in FFO, because I still need to back it and add the hanger, but it's the closest thing I have. All the stitching done is done, all the beading is done. That is wonderful. Yay, go me. Um, I don't really have any other updates on any projects. Um, oh, well, sort of I do. Um. Oh, I also got a couple of plastic totes. Um, I had my um, my current project, my whip floss bags. I store all my floss in floss away bags. Um, I had them in those recyclable, a couple of those recyclable shopping bags that you can buy at stores for like 50 cents a dollar, whatever. This is some of my threads for some of my works in progress. Um, <laughs> this seems like an awful lot. This is for multiple projects. This isn't just for one. These are colors in the, like, 3,000 range, the 900 to 3,000 range. 
So yeah, like all of these flosses on this big ring are for one kit. Or for not for one kit, but for all my projects. It just goes in number order. So I have them all on one ring. So yeah. <laughs> it's kind of crazy. But it's just something I decided to do. I had so many works in progress that I just took all my works in progress, pulled out all the floss bags, and put them all together. That way, all of my kits that take one color, that take color, say, 30, 3350, I know what ring they're on. I can just go pull that color out, and I can put it with the kit if I'm taking the kit anywhere or the um, project anywhere. But at least all my floss now is in one spot. So I only have one baggie, really, for each floss color, as opposed to having, you know, 15 projects that all have 310, having 15 baggies of 310, you know. This is 3371. This is all my 3371. It's pretty thick, you guys. There's a lot in there. So, there's a lot in there. So, anyway, I have a tub for these now. So I can package them up. Tub. So all my floss, all my whip floss. Big tub. <laughs> they're all on um, those big uh, rings. And they're all in floss away bags. There's a thing of specialty threads in here. Um, like this. This is all specialty threads and Weeks Dye Works threads and sampler threads and stuff um but yeah so that's all my thread i got this tub so i can lock it it looks nicer than having these just miscellaneous bags everywhere and cats digging into bags i can close close up the lid and it makes a little purge for the cats to sit on it can use a little teeny tabletop whatever um but i also got a tote to hold on my whips the plastic tote you can see down here this is a plastic tote that all my whips are in here um because all my whips used to be in a bag and they would fall over and scatter and they'd have like piles of bags just laying piles of my project bags <laughs> my ziplocs laying everywhere so um i don't know if i can dig it out pardon me for a minute give me just a minute i'll be right back all right, so I'm back. Um, so the next update I have is for the Cricut collection. This is the Skeleton Crew. You may remember this pattern. Um, I actually got onto the Bewitched, Bewitched Stitches Facebook group, and I am kind of sort of participating in their Dark 13 stitch along, which on the 13th of the month, 13th of every month, you know, you stitch on something dark and spooky or whatever. So I picked Skeleton Crew out. This was a whip that I have had um, that I intend to give to my niece. And um, I am stitching the skeletons in this. Let me put this behind it so you can see it a little better. I am stitching the skeletons in this in Glow in the Dark Thread. Um, I had only gotten over to here so far. So I did, did the brown. I brought the brown up and across. So I could actually start to stitch on the um, ship flag that's over here, off the bow of the ship. It's where the, it's right below the um, the black skeleton flag. That's kind of the one I'm working on right now. But um, this this flag here, which is the main mast in the middle, the main mast in the middle. Um, I had originally started stitching this in. Um, not glow in the dark thread but i am going to take that out and make that glow in the dark so all the sails are glow in the dark along with the skeletons i think that would look so cool yeah i'm not going to be able to show you the glow in the dark just yet and this is one of my new needle minders that i picked out um, take the needles off of it so you can see it a little bit better this is um a jewelry a piece of jewelry that i got at packet hands um, two weeks ago in West Virginia. This is a little pirate. I thought he was cute. Little rat dressed up as a pirate. I think he kind of goes with the ship really well. Um, this is kind of the first sort of themed, besides my Totoro, um, that's on my floral Totoro. This is the first themed needle minder that I'm actually using. I thought this was really cute. But yeah, so um, this is in glow in the dark. The skeletons are in glow in the dark. The skeleton right here has orange eyeballs. Um, the other ones are going to have black. Um, 
and I'm going to be taking out this white here in this uh, mast of the ship and doing it also in glow-in-the-dark threads. So yeah, I made a little bit of progress. I started in over on this side. I'm going to do this entire um, mast of the ship and this part of the ship and kind of work my way over and then I'll probably do this big mast in the middle and then um, there's a third mast there's a third mast and then um, I'll work on the bottom of the ship so that's where I've gotten and that's all my updates really um, so this week um, I've been binge watching a lot of stuff um, on FlossTube. One of the new people that I've started watching, um, and she's in the Bewitched Stitchers group, I've started watching um, this uh, very nice lady by the name of Amy. Um, her FlossTube is X underscore Amy DeVille, A-M-Y-T-I-V-I-L-L-E, kind of like Amityville, as in the Amityville horrors, but it's Amy DeVille. A M Y because her name's Amy. Um, it's X underscore Amy Deville underscore X. Um, I'm gonna link her flash to below, but I've been kind of binge watching her this week, and because um, she doesn't have, she has a small handful of videos yet, and I just hadn't seen her before, so I started watching her, and she's I got got all of her videos watched in one day, and she's a lot like me, you know, she kind of speaks her mind, she's very open and. She's just, uh, <laughs> she's very real. So, um, hi. Um, I'm glad I got to watch you. And hopefully you'll um, do, me a, do me a favor and, you know, come on over to my channel. Let me know what you think. Um, we have a lot in common, her and I. Um, she, you know, she likes horror movies. My husband and I, you know, we're fans of horror. I've read some Stephen King in my past. Um, I haven't read, I think I've read part of... The Witching Hour by Anne Rice. Um, I think that was an Anne Rice book. Um, I haven't read any of the vampire stories from Anne Rice. Um, I have a lot of friends that have. Um, but yeah, I've read a lot of Stephen King. I read, started reading Stephen King in high school. One of my Stephen, favorite Stephen King books was Needful Things. So if you watch this and um, you haven't actually read that yet, um, that is one of my Stephen King recommendations is Needful Things. Um, I really like that book. A lot um let's see but anyway her and I have we have a lot in common you know she uh <laughs> we have a lot of the same interests and stuff and um yeah so Bewitched Stitches is a, is a kind of an interesting group um you know they talk about more of the dark dark stuff you know um uh, witches and stuff like that and um I as you probably know, one of my interests, um, one of my personal interests, aside from cross-stitching, is um, I have a firm belief in ghosts and the par paranormal, and um, just because I've had experiences. And last year, I went on my first paranormal investigation. It was an overnight lock-in at one of the places in Marietta, Ohio which is across the river from where my in-laws live. Um, Marietta has a lot of haunted locations in it, and there's this group down there that um, hosts public overnight ghost hunts, and you can borrow their equipment and go. So last, last year in May, I had the opportunity to go to the Betsy Mills Club in Marietta, Ohio, and do an overnight investigation there with the group. It was my first overnight, it was my first paranormal investigation at all. And, uh, <laughs> Needless to say, if I could go, if I could afford to go every weekend, I would go. Um, it was a really neat experience. Um, I didn't, I had some of my own equipment, equipment if you could call it. Um, I had, my husband had brought home a Sony Handycam camcorder that uses those little mini cassettes um, to record. I think it's the... DVC cassettes or something, um, and I happened to find a package of the cassettes at Target on clearance. It was like in a clearance bin, kind of hidden back. So I got them specifically for the event. I took my Sony 
camcorder with me, my digital recorder. You can hear my cat, Harvey, who is kind of down there. Harvey. Hi, Harvey. You can hear my cat, Harvey. She's uh, feeling very motherly and carrying around little hair ties and mewling really strangely. Hey, Harvey. But um, anyway, so I went on this ghost hunt, and while we... <laughs> I didn't know that I had actually ca captured evidence until I had reviewed the video footage that I had um, taped uh, during my during the during the night. Um, so I used my my camcorder. They had a boo bear. I don't know if you guys have ever known a boo ever seen a boo bear used on any of the paranormal shows, but um, my favorite paranormal shows is Ghost Hunters um, and Ghost Hunters International. Um, TAPS, the Atlantic Paranormal Society, where um, Grant Wilson and um, some of his other friends have, um, you know, gone on investigations places. I actually have met Grant Wilson, and I'm a pretty, I'm, I'm a pretty good acquaintance, acquaintance of Grant. Um, as you know, he pro he is no longer on the show, and he is um, doing other things on the side now. Uh, because the show used to take up just too much time and he was away from his family too much. But now he's a, an artist and a game designer. And he and his buddy, Rich, they come to Columbus every year in June for the Origins Game show, game Fair. Um, it's a big convention here in town. Brings in probably 15,000 people. It's pretty huge. Um, and it's a four-day game convention where you play board games. Well, since he's a game designer, you know, his company comes and has a booth at the thing. So I always go, I always walk up to him on Thursday when I, you know, when the dealer's room opens and walk up, give him a hug, say hi, and we talk a little bit. And so <laughs> it's kind of nice to know that, you know, who I know Grant Wilson. <laughs> and yeah, I have a lot of his games. I own a lot of their, their company's games because he's Grant Wilson. And he's just a really nice guy. And every time he sees me, he, he recognizes me. He may not be able to call me by name, but he recognizes me, recognizes me, gives me a big hug, talks to me. He's just really down to earth. He's a really nice guy. So if you ever get a chance, um, <laughs> go to Rather Dashing Games and check them out. <laughs> I like their games. I like Grant Wilson. He also does, um, I don't know if you know this, but he composes music as well. He plays the piano and he had he composes some pretty fantastic piano music. Um, I'll see if I can remember to link link to his music below. But anyway, so you know, I went on this investigation last May, and um, I didn't realize <laughs> I had caught some evidence um, until I was at home later that week, watching the vid watching and listening to the video on my big screen TV. Um, that I had taken during the tour, because this group, you know, they start out their night around six or seven o'clock, you sign in, you relax, and they take you on like an hour, hour and a half tour of your location, so they can tell you about the location, the history of it, where the evidence has been, where evidence has been gathered before, some of the you know, known haunts in the area, and then they kind of tell you, well, you know, because of this, you know, we ask you not to go in this, you know, here's some of our equipment, you can borrow some of our equipment, um, whatnot, and then you take on your tour, and then after the tour, you have a few hours to wander around the facility, and either wander with somebody, one of their groups that does this all the time, and just experience things with them, or you can wander off on your own. Oh, well, I did a little bit of both, and, um, Anyway, the interesting thing is, is most of my evidence I caught using my little Sony camcorder, my little handheld Sony camcorder with the, you know, with the little mini cassettes, um, was captured on the tour before the, before the whole event even got started. Um, I had recorded basically the whole walkthrough of the area just so I'd have it on tape. And I caught about 8 to 10 EVPs um, in the span of about 10 minutes on one section of this video. It was, it was pretty cool. I was, <laughs> yeah, I was doing, I had my face turned away from the big TV and I was kind of listening. All of a sudden I was like, what did that just say? Because it was clear as day. Clear as day. It was, it was, it, it, I was floored. You know, just little, little, little me like this. And nobody, 
nobody, we had confirmation from everybody that was there, there was nobody in our group that night that had heard any of this. And I caught it on video. I was like, ugh. Oh. So, anyway, I'd really love to go on more, more ghost hunts. It's spectacular. Um, if you guys are interested in it, um, heck, for the, for the fun of it, I might actually see if I can attach it here. Um, <laughs> I can attach it to the end of the video. Um, you guys might get a, a big kick out of it. Um, I don't know. It's, it's pretty interesting. So, yeah, I totally believe in ghosts. Um, her, I don't know if she does, um, but just from personal experience growing up, I've had, I've had my share and I wholeheartedly believe that they exist and that, you know, we kind of wander this existence together. Um, I've seen a neighbor of ours. I've seen our cat that died in 2008. Um, yeah, you know, and it's all the whole scent, like, you know, a couple of days ago when I was at work, I was walking down this hallway and I took a sniff and I was like, oh, my grandfather's here. Well, I found out last week that my great uncle, my grandfather's brother, went in for heart surgery a week and a half ago, had complications and died. So my great uncle's funeral is this coming Saturday. Um, it's in Evanston, Wyoming. I'm not going to get to go as much as I really want to. I just couldn't get the flights, you know, into Salt Lake in time to go. But, uh... I think, you know, I've been smelling my grandfather, and I think that's par partly because of it, uh, because of, you know, his brother dying. Um, his brother was the only living relative of my grandfather's side. Now, a little tidbit, he's technically my step-grandfather because he didn't marry my grandmother until I was two, but they were high school sweethearts when they lived back in Evanston, Wyoming. So, um kind of my family has been a part of his family for a long time and they've known each other for quite a long time so um yeah the last time I saw my grandpa's brother was when my grandpa passed away in 2008 um they were over visiting with him when he was in the hospital and he passed away so um I was the first person on my mom's side of the family or my grandma's side of the family that they were able to get in touch with so they let me know that he had passed and I reached out to everybody else and let them know that he had passed and I flew out for his funeral in 2008 so um, I'm not gonna get to go to my great uncle's funeral um, this weekend it just wasn't in the cards as much as I'd really like to go <laughs> it's just not gonna happen um, so that's been kind of kind of a letdown um, but anyway, this summer, um, I'm going to go visit my great aunt Joyce and, um, hopefully get to visit Rand, Rand's, um, grave site, my grandpa's grave site, my grandma's grave site. I'm assuming they're all going to be buried kind of together. So that'll be awful nice. Um, my great uncle Rand and his wife Joyce, they owned and operated the family motel and RV park in Evanston and Wyoming. Um, if you're ever out in Evanston, Wyoming, and if you have an RV and need some place to stop, um, please stop in to the Phillips RV park in Evanston, Wyoming. That is owned and operated by my family on my grandfather's side. Um, I don't know I don't know. I believe their daughter, Darla, is the owner operator now with her kids. But um, there's a big house that's right next door that is Rand and Joyce's house. I've spent quite a few visits there. Um, when I was in college in Wyoming, uh, between, you know, for um, spring break and Christmas break and summer break, um, I would drive from Wyoming to California to go stay with my grand, stay with, go back home for the summers and breaks where my parents are in California. And my grandfather and I, we would always stop in Evanston and stay at their house overnight because Evanston was about an eight hour drive from my, where my grandfather lived in Cheyenne. 
So it made a nice day's trip. You know, we could stay over there the first leg of the trip or the last, you know, before the last leg of the trip on the way back. Um, so, yeah, I got to see them quite a bit. And Dylan and I were going to go take a road trip out to visit with them. And so I could show him the university in Laramie. We, I could show him around Cheyenne, and then we could drive all the way to Evanston, and we could go visit with them and see my, my grandparents' grave sites and everything. Um, but now Dylan won't get to meet him, and I'm really kind of sad because uh, <laughs> now here we go. <laughs> Rand. Sorry, you guys. Ran was a lot like my grandfather. I mean, I think Ran was the baby in the family. And I'm not sure where my grandfather was, but I think Ran, his name is William Ranold. Ranold, R A N O L D. William Ranold. Everybody knew him as Ran um, or Ranold. Um, nobody knew him by William in our family. But Ran um, was a lot like my grandpa in a lot of ways. They, you could definitely tell they were brothers. They had the same mannerisms. They talked very similar. Ranald was very soft-spoken, but oh boy, was he. He was a character. <laughs> had a pretty good sense of humor, and he could make you laugh, and he was just he was just generally a really good guy, and he and Joyce have been together for a long, long time. Joyce is uh, pretty short. I think she's shorter than me, actually, and I'm not quite five foot. But Joyce is shorter than me, and I'm sorry I'm crying, but um, I'm just kind of really sad. You know, it's hard. But oh, I'm sorry. And so I was really hoping I could go because you know, I'd like to visit with Joyce, but my husband's going to make it make it a point to send me out so I can visit with my great aunt Joyce and um, just take a little longer trip, like maybe a week and visit with her. So that'll be good, but I'll never get to see Rand and Dylan won't get to meet him. So it's just, <laughs> it's really sad. So I'm sorry. It's how you keep it real. You know, the emotions, it's tough. And then with, you know, everything else going on, it's just, it's crappy. It really kind of sucks. So anyway, <laughs> there is that. Um, anyway, I know Amy, Amy from Amityville, she's been dealing with, um, a loss of her own. So, <laughs> it was just real to see, you know, and real to hear her talk about it. So anyway, if you get a chance, go over to her Flash Tube channel. It's X underscore Amy Deville, A M Y T I V I L L E underscore X. I'll put her. I'll put a link to her uh, to her YouTube channel below, and you can go check her out. Um, so yeah, it's just 2018 has been really rough for me, you guys. Um, we're going to go see my mother-in-law after the last visit, you know. We saw her two weeks before our last visit, which was two weeks ago. So, in the last four weeks, um, there's been some dramatic changes with her. Um, she's terminal. She's 79. She's not seeking treatment for her illness now. And the doctors have given her until June or July to live. And based on our last visit, I guess she has, you know, she's, she's going through the ups and downs. Um, based on our last visit, Dylan and I have been pretty sure that um, we'd be really surprised if she makes it through May. So we don't know, but we're going to go down and visit with her. This is Dylan's stepmom. She's been his stepmom since he was in probably junior high, maybe. Maybe even before that, maybe grade school. I don't know. I don't. I don't remember exactly. But I know she's been his stepmom since like junior high, probably back in the um, very early '80s. So um, she's been around his family a long time. Um, I've known her as long as I've known him, 
and we've been married 22 years, so anyway, it's gonna be hard, um, yeah, so we're gonna go down and probably hang out with them and eat and visit and clean and help them do things around the house and, you know, just, just be there with them, share time with them, so that'll be good, I'm looking forward to that, but yeah, I am kind of missing my great uncle's funeral, um, it's Saturday in Evanston, Wyoming, um, kind of sad that I'll be missing that, but it just wasn't in the cards for me to get out there. I mean, I was going to fly from here to Salt Lake City. Um, Frontier Airlines was the cheapest, but uh, by almost $300 over Southwest, which is really strange. Um, but uh, I just couldn't, I just couldn't make it work. And uh, it's just, it's just tough, you know, when something like this happens. And I know I'm family and everything, but I think spending time out there in the summer is going to be a little better. Um, so yeah, I probably talked about this already. But anyway, um, so that's all I got. This is an hour long, you guys. I wasn't expecting it to be an hour long. Um, but anyway, check them out. I've been vin binge watching Floss Tube. I've also been binge watching Stitcherista, um, and Pam and Stephanie from Just Keep Stitching. Um, so I'll put their Floss Tube channels down below as well. Um, once this is getting uploaded, but anyway, just kind of wanted to give you an update. Um, I know I always say when we go to West Virginia that I'll try and get on the front porch for a Stitch With Me video. I don't know if that'll happen. It's supposed to be warmer this weekend, but, um, we're only going to be there basically all day Saturday and half a day on Sunday. So I don't know if I'll get a chance to do that or not. If I do, great. I'll see you then. If not, it'll probably be like another week or so. Oh, goodness. It'll probably be another week or so before I can get another video up. Um, again, thank you for watching. Um, leave a comment below. If you'd like to know more information about something or if you have a question, please let me know. Um, I probably am not going to edit this a whole lot. Um, I don't really like watching myself, so for me to like edit a video... You're probably just going to get it as I record it. Um, sniffles and rufflings and paper shifting and everything. You know, as it happens, cats meowing, whatever. Husband's interrupting me. Um, and I'm I'm not going to say I'm sorry because I'm not. Um, that's just me. If you don't like that, you don't have to watch me. So anyway, I'm going to go ahead and cut it here. Um, it's going on an hour and two minutes long. Um... I hope you enjoyed my update. Um, and like I said, I might try and do a Stitch With Me video on the my in-laws front porch. I don't know yet. Um, it depends on the weather. It depends on how warm it is. So anyway, um, thanks for watching. Oh, you can see Harvey over here. Want to see my cat? Harvey! That is Harvey. And the other one sleeping next to her. That is Gurr. Harvey! Hey. Her name is Harvey Dent. Two-Face. You can see... Half black, half orange. Harvey. She's four. Gur is our oldest cat, and she's deaf. Yeah, she can't hear. You can make all the loud noises that you want in the world, and it won't phase her. She's still a little lovable thing, but uh, she's our oldest cat. I want to say she's over ten. But, yeah, that's Harvey. Harvey. Hi, Harvey. Come here. Hey, Harvey. With the amazing whisker. Harvey, I can't reach you. You're way over there. But yeah, that's Harvey. I hope you like her. Don't mind my mess on the shelves. Our shelves are always messy. Surprisingly, nothing falls off. <laughs> but anyway, so there you go. All right, you guys. Um, That is going to be it for tonight. And um, just want to say, stitch all the things, buy all the things, get all the stash, beat all the beads, use all the Krynic. Do all that stuff because, you know, <laughs> your time on earth is short and there isn't enough time to stitch all the things that you have in your stash. I know that was, that's me. And, um, keep yourself healthy because there may be other people counting on you. Um, and, uh, keep your sanity. Nothing is worth Making you sick, make your, making yourself sick, and making yourself crazy. Um, if stitching is your getaway, stitch.
and stitch a lot. I'm get my stitching bug has kind of went way up like that. Um, I'm collecting patterns. I'm buying some stuff that um, you know I haven't I haven't spent a lot of money on stash for cross stitch in quite a long time. So and suddenly it's like it's like from here and it went up to like here in like a day. So yeah, I'm buying and stitching a lot. Um, mania, I may actually do mania, but I'm going to have to figure out either a theme or what I'm going to do, if it's going to be a combination of starts and whips or all whips or what I'm going to do. But I think I actually may do some sort of mania starting in May, um, stitch mania, um, if you know what that is. Um, but yeah, I'll also put in some of the links or some of the stitch alongs that I'm going through right now and some of the ones that I might consider starting. Um, but anyway, I digress. <laughs> like I, I, I said like almost five minutes ago that I was getting ready to leave and I'm still here five minutes later. Um, all right, so this is it, you guys. But like I said, keep it real. Keep going. Keep stitching because it's really all about you. And um, <laughs> Harvey's doing something crazy. Oh, she's looking herself. Um, it's all about you. And, uh, if you're not happy, yeah. Anyway, so, uh, this is it. Uh, my drink of choice tonight, I haven't been shown is Coke. I'm a Coke drinker. Um, my grandfather was a Coke drinker. I know this is, I digress again. Look at that. I'm trying to say goodbye and yet I'm digressing. My grandfather was a Coke drinker. I drew up drinking, drinking Coke with my grandfather. Um, I can tell. A slight difference between Pepsi and Coke. Coke is my favorite. I will drink Pepsi in a pinch. But usually if a place has Pepsi products, I will drink Dr. Pepper. Um, let's see. Oh, and there is a difference between 7-Up and Sprite. I don't care for Sprite. I'm a 7-Up person. And yes, I can tell a difference. There is a definite difference in Sprite and 7-Up. So, 7-Up all the way. Coke is my choice. I do drink other things. I like root beer. Bark's root beer is really good. You know, stuff like that. Um, the other thing is Kroger, which is one of the grocery stores here. <laughs> Another side tangent before I go. Um, they have this line of um, sodas that are um, real sugar sodas. And the real sugar sodas are really good. So I drink a lot of Kroger brand real sugar sodas. Now the difference is they come in eight packs instead of 12 packs. But they're pretty good. They have a really good ginger beer. Their ginger beer is really good. Um, the ginger ale is good. The ginger beer, no, it's birch beer. It's, it's a birch beer. Their birch beer is really good. Um, their cola, you know, all their real sugar sodas is really good. And it's Kroger brand. So it's, it's good stuff. I like that. Um, I would drink diet because of the lack in calories, but um, I don't like the aspartame taste. It's kind of nasty, and it really just kind of makes me go, ugh. So I'm not a diet drinker. So if I'm going to drink soda, I'm going to drink soda. So, yeah, my husband drinks all the diet. I mean, he can go through like a couple of two liters of Diet Mountain Dew in a day. Ugh. I don't like Mountain Dew. Well, the only, I'll take the back. The only Mountain Dew I really like is the Baja Blast that they sell at Taco Bell. That is really the only Mountain Dew I like. Um, but yeah, anyway, I'm a Coke drinker, you guys. Coke, that's where it's at. Um, and <laughs> look at that. I almost made another five minutes just talking about soda, trying to, <laughs> trying to get out of here. So anyway, I will leave it at that. You guys, I will see you sometime soon, hopefully, with another update, stitchy update, um, whip update, stuff I've gotten in the mail update. <laughs> um, anyway, take care. Uh, do all the things, stitch all the things, read all the things, watch all the things, floss all the things, um, you know, whatever. Take care and keep on moving on with Coke. Take care. Night.